they're dying out here. They just want to stick us all in to a hotel to give us. It's like the swine flu. <laughs> we don't like pigs. The shelter like increased closure. There is no other option. This is Brandon Farley reporting live from downtown Portland, Oregon, where you can see behind me is a bridal shop. Across the way is Multnomah County Central Library. And in the doorstep of this bridal shop is human fecal matter, presumably from a homeless person. And this is why they say that Portland is a shithole. And I feel bad for this person walking in today at 11 o'clock and looking down at that. I mean, this is a nice little bridal shop. Why do they have to be subjected subjected to homeless shit? I don't know. I don't understand. I mean, can we uh, just clean up the city? Can we quarantine the homeless? I mean, what with the whole coronavirus outbreak and everything, I think it's about time to reduce the spread that we quarantine these homeless people here in downtown Portland. Get them out. I don't want to see any more shit on the ground. That's disgusting and nobody's cleaning it up. What's going on, Portland? Come on, you can do better than that. environment for anyone really this is complete bio waste needles on the ground shit everywhere someone is junking out on heroin and uh, nobody's here to clean up the city I mean they're here to trim the bushes but that's about it shit on your face, man. Are you okay? You look like you're on heroin. What's up with you, man? You don't look too good. You got the coronavirus? Do you have the coronavirus? All right. Can you stop doing drugs down here, please? I live in this neighborhood and you make it look really ugly. So there you have it, folks. Uh, we've got a uh, infected homeless person right next to I-405. I and the scary part is, is there's a high school right there. There's a stadium right there. I mean, it's just a cocktail for the coronavirus here in downtown Portland. You've got homeless meth junkies, heroin junkies, all this. They're just, you know, spreading their disease, taking shits on the ground and, and, and picking their sores out, you know. That's a fucking biohazard. Like, if you're gonna junk out, do it in your fucking tent or something. I don't wanna see that shit. 
That's nasty. I mean, like, they're everywhere. They're fucking everywhere. Get away from it here in downtown Portland. There's glass on the ground from, from shattered car windows that junkies have broken into because they need their fix and they have to steal to get by. This is the environment we're living in, in, in a first world country, in one of the richest cities in America. There's literally, I'm looking at shit everywhere. Junkies. And you're telling me there's a coronavirus epidemic right here? Why aren't we quarantining the homeless, especially the homeless junkies? Why aren't we quarantining them? It's disgusting. Clean it up, Portland. Clean up your act, you know? Because I'm tired of reporting on this type of shit. And I'm tired of seeing people get their cars broken into. I'm tired of seeing homeless junkies sprawled out on the landscape like it's just a statue or something. Like it's just something to look at as I walk by. I mean, what are we doing here? What the fuck is going on? What did I just watch? Every time I go outside, I see this shit. For that, uh, the reason why I ask is I'm wondering how you are surviving the coronavirus outbreak. I'm in a tent down by the Chevron between the bank and the, there's a fountain there. And uh, so you're staying in the tent. Um, with regards to hygiene and whatnot, how are you following the protocol? I go to the UGM. UGM? Yeah. And that nice is, shower. Okay. And, uh, is that free? Yeah. Fantastic. I'm at the TPI. You have to go in and you have to have ID. To be, they, they give you that. Oh, okay. I see that. Yeah. And then uh, that's the TPI, Transitional Project Inc. Mm -hmm. that, they're trying to get me a place. I got beat up at the Chevron station in November. I had to come back to court Friday and uh, they're going to uh, indict him to a felony because he cleaned my clock. I didn't do anything. I was trying to get some gas for a weed whacking friend of mine. Uh, you know, it was inclement weather, they like to whack in the rain. So I was no draining way. the lines, you know. Okay. He would fill the gas tank, but he wouldn't drain the lines into their tank. Okay. You pay for that. Oh, right. So right. you should get that. You know, if you're an attendant, if you get 10 bucks, you shut the pump up at 10, then you drain the line. That's their fuel. They paid for it. Okay. So he's going around with his own can and getting that, that that made him and he's like six three three ten russian forward oh, i got an army coat on i got feathers hanging out of my head i'm trying to help this guy named jerry fernandez and uh yeah i i, I got beat up i got a plate in my head now 
I can't quite see right. And your double, if I look at you and I go over there, it's 45 degrees. And I got this peripheral, uh, like uh, like if you smoke pop with too much chemicals, do, yeah. you get that twinkling. Yeah, that's what I got. Because wow. uh, yeah. something's wrong in my brain. Grand Theft Auto <laughs> It's vision. not processing. My vision isn't right. I used to have perfect vision. I'm 62. I welded since 65. And, uh, you know, I built Trident submarines from 75 to 91. Keep us safe. You don't have to worry about nuclear, nothing. I mean, we got 18, 24 Tridents. I developed the thrusters for them. I'm Bill Green. Bill. Uh, and before we're going to do the Corona Bump, I'm doing okay, this. the Corona Bump. <laughs> uh, so tell me, um, Bill, how long have you been on the streets? I mean, and how, how oh, are about you? Four years. How, and is this coronavirus thing something that you're concerned about? Well, uh, all, the, all the homeless situations, they got Sandy things everywhere now. And, uh, and that's the first thing they talk about when we group up before we eat. Okay. Is there's two Sandy things before you go in the dining hall. And uh, they make sure that you do that. If you don't do it, then you are not allowed in there. You know, if you cough, cough into your elbow, and uh, you know, wash your clothes every day, things like that. So, I mean, we're aware that it's very contagious. And you know, we've got, uh, the UGM talks about it every day, every day, you know, three times a day, they tell you about uh, what not to do. Remind everybody what the UGM is. It's the uh, it's a Union Gospel Mission. Mission. It's over by the Chevron. Uh, that's where I triaged when I got beat up. Uh, took them 45 minutes to get there, and then they sent a ladder truck, two ambulances, cops everywhere. They arrested that guy, and now he's on his way to prison because of what I did Friday with the grand jury. I explained the situation. They had the film, the security. Oh, it was horrible. I they had everything. I almost lost it. You know, oh, I was goodness. just watching myself get beat up. I boxed twice, 75 and uh, 79. This time it was a different weight oh, class yeah. all together. Yeah, all together. He sucker punched me, got me off guard, just drilled me. I mean, you imagine somebody 310. I'm 155, 62. I'm like 510 now. I was 6'1". 268 at one time. So I used to lift with Arnie. And just hit you. Pissed no him warning. off, you know. He, first, nope, it's not an approved gas container. It was a one gallon, real heavy styrene apple. Mm -hmm. He's been using it for months, but it was only half full and he already put the oil in there. Yeah. So I was trying to fill it up so it wouldn't be smoky. And uh, you know, I got beat up over it. You gotta inform the public of how serious it is. I mean, if I had it, we're too close. They said six feet, because if you sleep, it's actually 15, 20 feet from the drift.
Oxygen. Really? What, what for? Who me? It's okay. It's okay. it's okay. it's okay. It's okay. Never mind. Holy shit. Never mind. I've been diagnosed with COPD. Yes, been sir. out here on the streets for the second time. My caseworker is working with me to get an apartment, but still, being this cold out here, I'm not even supposed to be out in this weather. It's like, what are they going to do with the people who are sick? You know, they're dying out here. And so you you got other concerns than just this COVID virus? Yeah, because it's like that. that I'm not really worried about that. I'm worried about myself being so sick. Now the the mayor today and the county commissioner chair uh, Deborah Kafori said that they were implementing a new program that would give vouchers to people so that they can rent yeah. space. Well, Have you heard anything about this yet? No, I haven't. Has uh, Portland Impact or anybody come through and given you no. any information on? No, none of them. I, I hot windowed something like this going to happen, and I got with my caseworker, and I said, hey, I'm sick, you know, let's work with this. Yes, ma'am. And she told me, well, we don't know how we're going to give you up the funds. So that's well, thank where, you. where that is. I appreciate your time. Thank you very much. Uh -huh. Have a good afternoon. You thank too. You. Thank you. Good luck. Yeah. Be ashamed of yourselves. Why? I said before. Have a nice day. What, what, what am I should I be ashamed of? Have a nice of? day. Sorry I said that. Bye. Have a nice All day. All right. Today, uh, the city of Portland uh, and the county commission uh, said that they were going to be giving vouchers out for hotel rooms. And I was wondering if uh, TPIs, if they've given, gotten any information from the city and what their response was. Well, uh, a couple things. We're not TBI. Um, okay. TBI, you might want to try the door down there, 20 feet that direction. Big they down. might buzz you in. Bud Clark? We're in Bud Clark Office. We're in the building. Yeah, okay. Uh, so, uh, so can you tell me, uh, is this a hotel then? Or this is an apartment? Apartment building? Tr transitional housing? Or apartment, apartment housing. Apartment yeah. housing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so I'm just wondering where people are going to uh, be able to come to get the information that was provided today at the uh, press conference. I see this here. Was, is this new? Uh, no, that's been there for okay. a while. So this isn't the virus related? Then. No. The only information I can give you would be from here. Oh, no. pocket phone directory. Yeah. I then it will be uh, one of those numbers and you can get all your information. Okay, so. Why did you call 911? What do you need? How can we help you? You having trouble breathing? Yeah? Hey, sir, is there a reason why 
while you're filming? about his health or anything. Uh, the reason why I ask is uh, just because we're out here asking people about, you know, the coronavirus and what's going on today. Nobody's got it out here, but they keep shutting down everything, so there's nowhere to go. This isn't an uh, 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 unusual scene to see uh, uh, an ambulance in this part of town. And so you guys haven't seen anything different or any, ex like, uptick in cases or whatever? No. 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 I haven't seen anybody that's even sick. I'm just putting this on because if they got it on, obviously there's a reason for it. So. Unless everybody's washing their hands, you're not going to catch it off by can touch something. You're going to take catch it breathing it. Shit's airborne. So what do you guys think it is? Something made by the government. Yep, something to control thing. Like Either control kind of population or if I can control if I can just people, period. Yeah. So where do you guys like to hang out though, honestly? Pretty much down here, around here, but everything's closed down. So we're just back and forth now. You know? Yeah. The mission's closed, this place is closed. Keep guys only letting in like 25 or 27 people at a time, including the yeah. staff. And 10 bucks for the two of you guys. I like to. Yeah, we'll give you a video too if you ever want a video. Well, just just remind people that the street photographers down here aren't so bad. You know what I mean? And at the end of the day, you know, like, uh, we all just we all got a job to do, right? So. And everybody's different too. You pick and choose, you know, whoever and stuff. Here's nine bucks, guys. Right. Thank, Thank you, sir. Good luck with that. Yeah, What's your doggy's name? His name's Randy. 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 Yeah. Randy. Alright, well, thanks a lot for the time and all that, you guys. Will you give her a boy? If you ever record a picture of me, I'm gonna fuck you up, nigga. So your body fights off germs and it won't fight off when it can't fight off. Anything that they say that is through the air, well we're all exposed to it if that's the case. We all exposed to it. Even the people that say that, oh we're going to close down because of the coronavirus. Well motherfuckers, you guys are retarded because the ones that are going to die from it are the ones probably... Uh, the mayor and the commissioner, county commissioner, said that they're going to be coming out with um, vouchers for hotels. They want to fill up every hotel room. Is that something that you guys would take advantage of? Oh, yeah, I would. I would love that. And, and, uh, Do you expect to see people from the city or county walking up and down the street Everybody's offering gonna services? That's funny. That's, that's really funny that that's even happening because they don't give a fuck usually about us any other time. Mm -hmm. Because that's really the one, that's really the question so that I have. So when do they ever care about us or we, uh, they just want to stick us in a hotel and blow us all the fuck up? That's what it sounds cheating. like. <laughs> but you would take advantage of it, of it if you had oh, the opportunity. I don't know. We don't like to take advantage of people. Yeah, right. Not people. Right, so we probably won't go in just because of the fact that they're a bunch of bullshitters anyways and they just want to stick us all in to a hotel to give us the It's power. like the swine flu. <laughs> we don't like pigs. 
we are going to stay. <laughs> right? <laughs> like capitalist ones. Huh. Right. Do you know what that word means? <laughs> I don't remember. I don't remember, I don't remember either. either. What does it mean? Do you guys know what it means? What's that? <laughs> what does it mean? I don't know. We're American. Boing, 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 boing. I can't really get American. Like, I mean, they sit here and they underground everybody from you can look the look in the way we talk. Right. It's hey. we're black. And here, let's just bring you to the computer class that will teach you how to uh, read and uh, teach you how to talk, but we won't, we won't teach you how to read and write. That way we can fucking scam on your ass. Tell it a very cute thing. TPI is there to fucking oh, put we everybody. Go tomorrow. We gotta oh my god! Oh my god! Hooker! No, oh, we see a hooker! Kick us out now. Oh no, you but they're the biggest hookers of all hookers. Now she's talking shit publicly. Now we're definitely gonna get the virus. So, oh no! We're infected! You know, all I care so, about is So, those motherfuckers think they care like about people. What are we gonna How do, do they care about people? Well, you go to treatment and they say, oh, we'll, 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 we'll help, help you. you. What, 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 really but in reality, they're just are there to pass it. Are we like the Jews? Are we like the I'm in one of the TPI shelters that are over here. TPI, the day center itself, has shut down everything. It's shut, shut down, you had to stand at the door to get your mail. They're letting people in still to shower and do all that stuff, but it's by a waiting list. They're not letting anybody in the day center. The libraries are closed down. I went out, out today with the Street Roots team, and we handed out care packages of sanitizer, sanitizer and uh, socks and whatnot and list of places where people mobile hand washing system places and you know restrooms and whatnot they could use the biggest question that was asked to me today was where can i get blankets where can i get tarps the biggest question is where can i charge my phone even though we're homeless or we're on the streets most of us still have phones and most of us that's our main source of communication with all of our families some cities are going on quarantines san francisco's not letting anybody in or out Today, uh, the Kansas School District, the whole entire state of Kansas, canceled school for the remaining of the year. Missouri's to follow, Kentucky's right after that. Like, for the whole entire year. So this is turning in slowly an epidemic. I know the president has plans to help people, but who is he really gonna help this down here? Like, these people, that they go to eat at Blanche Shea House and stuff like that. Yesterday, they were letting 30 people in at a time. Usually that place serves 100 at a time. Wow. They're letting 25 in at a time. This morning when I went for lunch, they weren't even letting anyone in. They were handing out bags at the door. I volunteer at Sisters of the Road Cafe. They are down to a point where they can't let anybody in. It's just out the door services only and only for a couple hours. What's gonna happen with the hundreds and hundreds of people that are down here that have no place to go? They say that they're worried about the people passing on this virus. But if you ask me, if all these people that are down here, we survived all winter down here, and we survived in the elements, we probably pretty much have the fucking strongest immune system compared to anybody in the city. We are around it all day, all night, and we're not sick. The CDC said there's 30 confirmed cases in the state of Oregon with only one death. You know how many of them were homeless? None. So why are they taking away all the resources that people that are trying to help themselves away. I mean, that's just one thing that's really bugging me. Like, we are in a freeze. I'm in a homeless shelter myself. We're on a freeze. The homeless shelter I'm in has 28 open beds right now. The homeless shelter right over here at Doreen's place, they have over 30 open beds. The one down the block has 16. Other ones that I've heard have 38 and 40. The overnight shelter at Portland Rescue Mission, they used to house 70 men at night with mats on the floor. They're down to 26 mats a night is all they will allow in. Do you want to jump in uh, crime or, because that's all these people are gonna get desperate. That's They're what's gonna, gonna happen, you think? Yeah, people are gonna get desperate and yeah. people are gonna start doing whatever Cycle they can to survive. Do you know a solution? What could the city do to help? I mean... Definitely don't suspend services for people that need them i mean it's one thing they're shutting down all the restaurants and stuff like that i'm a chef by trade 
You think I can get a job right now? I've been doing it for 25 years. Now they're shutting down the restaurants. They're shutting down restaurants. I can't get a job. How's that to help me along my mission, even though I am in a shelter? How's that to help me get a job, save money, and to eventually move out? I got all this information this morning from, um, I work for Street Roots. Okay. Yep. So they took all their information from the CDC this morning on that. And we actually went out this morning as a street team handing out you know, socks, hand sanitizer, stuff like that. List of places where, hey, this is where you can go wash your hands. This is where you can go use the bathroom. And that's what we did all morning long. It's spreading information and it's giving somebody a little bit of hope when they don't know anything. Oh, you have I, I, don't, I don't have one of the bags that we gave out, but I have, you know, the information that we had. And this was all drawn up from the CDC. We even have a picture of if you do get sick and they, they come to you looking like this, they're not trying to hurt you. These are EMTs, this is public safety. They're trying to help you. I mean, it goes anyway from what the county thinks everything is, their closures, also what the governor is doing for emergency stations, um, porta potties all over the city, hand washing stations, stuff like that. My worst nights in here, I got back to Portland on December 2nd. By December 4th, I was robbed three times. Everything that I owned was taken from me. My chef, my chef clothes, my knives, everything that I owned was gone. So I had to rebuild from the start. Then about every two weeks, it seemed that it would happen that I wasn't housed somewhere that my backpack would be stolen or somebody would cut my wallet off me or anything. Now I'm not talking about, I'm not talking about debit cards, replacing those, replacing social security cards. You can only replace those so many times in a lifetime. IDs, I'm, when that stuff's hard to get by because in desperate measures, people are going to do whatever they have to do to survive. Absolutely. And if you're taking away the smallest things people have, Shit's gonna get bad, man. Shit's gonna get really bad. gonna come out of this fucking stupid ass virus. We're all gonna go on our merry fucking way and literally there's only been two people that fucking died from it. So the mayor and the county commissioner said that they're gonna be um, providing shelters with uh, vouchers for hotels. wouldn't fucking fill me though. Hey, it's just my job man. I'm just doing my job. Fuck your job. Fucking asshole. You're Fuck off. You're a fucking asshole man. Fuck you. Hey man, don't, 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 don't. Look, man. Come on, Brandon. Let that fucking guy go, man. Get that fucking shit out of my face. What are you even doing with this, man? Seriously. I hope you fucking die, faggot. Your mother gets raped and murdered. Hey, you should get that shit looked at. Your leg? It's really hey, fucked up. You should fuck off! It's fucked up, man. Go eat a dick. It's probably from all the drugs you do. Go eat a dick, you faggot. Go, go fucking OD off some drugs, motherfucker. Give me some money. I would if I had it. I'd give you all the money in the world to OD. Oh, please, please. Cause you're just a waste of fucking life, dude. Do it. You're a fucking waste of life. Please do it. Please do it. You're not even fucking worth it. You're a piece of shit. You're nothing, dude. What the fuck are you doing with your life? Besides causing damage in my city. Your city? Yeah, my fucking city. When did it become yours? I don't see a journalist.
journalist with a fucking big ass camera. Portland. I didn't know it was that. I live in this city, and you make it look disgusting with all your fucking sores cool. and your drug addiction. Cool. Awesome. You should get fucking help for that. Fuck you. Because I know you steal shit to get high. No, I don't steal. Well, then how else do you get high? I can. I recycle. Well, all the canneries are shut down, so you're not getting high. No, they're not. We're stupid. Go check. They just, go check. Go to Fred Meyer, go to Safeway. They're all shut down. You're not getting any money f to get high. I'm Brandon Farley. Brandon Farley? Yeah, you can look it up on YouTube. I think I've interviewed you before. You're a Street Roots vendor? Um, I, I was a Street Roots vendor. I'm now a uh, candidate for mayor. I'm on the ballot. How are you? Yeah, I am. Just like pork chop. Do you know pork chop? What's that? Do you know pork chop, Mike Jenkins? Uh, I don't think so. Well, well you should know your, uh, who you're running against. He's one of the, he's a um, guy with the one leg, but he, he's, he was homeless for a while. Actually, he's actually homeless now, but... Uh, it don't matter. Oh, um, I just went to the elections office. They said there was another houseless candidate, but she said Mc, Mc, she mispronounced his last name. But I know who you're talking about for sure. Yeah, I'm trying to remember your name. I'm Daniel Hoffman. Yeah. yeah. I met you at PSU. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, I'm the guy who overturned the table at the community conversations meeting a couple weeks ago in front of the mayor and on Coin Six News. Oh, there was about 300 people there. Where, where was that at? Uh, that was the one at uh, uh, Portland State University. It was on a Tuesday, two weeks ago, I think. And I've also I've spoken at seven different legislative committee hearings, including the Senate and House Judiciary Committee hearings, uh, fighting for homeless rights. Disability rights. Yeah. Create an organization called Sheltered Homeless Advocacy Coalition, as well as the Homeless Citizens Movement. Um, I created something called Elevator Economics Theory, which is in Portland Housing Last, which is challenging the housing first. And uh, basically, that talks about um, elevating the poor class society out of it rather than perpetuating it through programs that benefit corporations and the developers and the property managers rather than. Uh, actually investing in people. So my whole campaign is people first rather than housing first. So we're trying to invest in entrepreneurism, arts, humanities, trying to usher in a uh, uh, renaissance here in Portland again, um, as well as uh, investing in small businesses, you know, helping them transition to compete with like Amazon and uh, Walmart online. I was a growth strategist uh, attending the Growth Hackers Conferences in Palo Alto. So I learned growth strategy from the people from uh, Uber and Airbnb right when they were first starting out. So I understand that their businesses are probably failing because more people are consuming things online rather than going into brick and mortar. So I'd rather take those city resources that are going to housing first and, like I said, invest in people first and help strengthen those small businesses. There's too many shops empty. And they keep building more buildings. Right? It's not helping anything. Money's not going into infrastructure that provides economic ec economic opportunity for everybody. My elevator economics theory proposes tabula rasa centers rather than shelters where we use alternative medicine techniques to help with the withdrawals from addiction and the trauma that happens here on the streets. What's it called? So it's called uh, a tabula rasa center. Tab tabula rasa? Tabula rasa. It means blank slate or a new start. Okay. So we heal the trauma, we heal the addiction through alternative medicine like massage therapy, mindfulness techniques, things like that. And then we um, transition from there into uh, their individual life plans. What did you always want to be? You know, and how can we help you achieve that by supporting you? So if you're an artist or a musician, let's help you be an artist or musician. And as you stay in the Tabula Raza Center, which is kind of like a shelter, but it's an open, domed face building, a lot of room where it's not trauma informed care it's just brotherly and sisterly love right so the people who work there live there everybody everybody lives and works together and as you're pursuing your individual path to happiness as we market your products and services to the world we take a percentage back into the center so it's self-sustaining it's also built with uh, technology the highest technology so we want to use technology for the good not for the bad this is daniel running from there hey how you doing nice to meet you that's all right. I don't buy into that. Uh, so you're running for mayor, huh? Okay. So I, uh, I have a couple websites out there right now where you can look up some information. DelitePoverty.yellowsite.com. That's where I'm encouraging people who are in poverty or homeless or houseless, however you want to say it. I like to say ageless. 
um, to get out and vote. You've got till April or April 27th to register. Uh, May 19th is the vote for mayor. Um, I've been challenging the mayor every meeting I get to. I'm vocal. Um, like I said, a lot of the neighborhood associations are behind me. I have another website, Portland Housing Last, that talks about my elevator economics theory, where we invest in elevating people poverty out of it rather than actually perpetuating poverty, which the current policies are in place. Um, Homeless Citizens Rights Org is where you'll see the videos of me testifying at the state legislature at this last session, um, fighting for ageless rights, disability rights. Um, my testimony blocked several of those bills from transpiring. Um, again, the news media, mainstream news media, is not reporting on any of the stuff that I've done. Um, all of the elitists that are in control right now, uh, Portland Business Alliance, are coming against me pretty strong. They put a ban on any, all of the major news networks, and I've tagged them on everything I've done. You can look me up on Twitter, yeah. Ageless Rights USA. Ageless Rights USA. Yeah. Well, are you concerned about this uh, not being able to, to speak to people because of the virus? So that's that's been a big uh, setback for my campaign because I only have access to public library and the law library. Both of those are closed right now. I have no phone. Um, I have no money. I'm running without any campaign contributions, just word of mouth. Um, so I'm trying to speak on the streets to as many people as I can. Um, luckily, um, I received a couple of those uh, invitations by the neighborhood associations, which uh, quite a few of them are starting to support that elevator economics theory. And, um, but I have no way to find out if I've been invited to any more because I have no access to email because of this coronavirus scare, uh, which I think is a drastic overreaction that's just hurting businesses and it's putting a further stereotype on homeless people right now. How can I contact you if I wanted to? Yeah, through please. the email? Uh, through so, Twitter, so email address is probably best. It's, it's molko, molko dot court case at protonmail.com. My emails and internet have been getting hacked, so sometimes if you click on my link, it'll say oops, I didn't put that there. Um, there's a large body of people because I'm the most vocal critic in the state about housing, uh, housing first. Uh, and trying to present solutions other than that. There's a lot of people that are making a lot of money off Housing First that are really trying to keep me down. So I believe the mayor's office, um, the COC, um, are all working um, perhaps with the uh, Citizens uh, Cyber Task Force, which is an all-citizen task force, which I believe is unconstitutional, that's using resources of the FBI and other law enforcement to tag activists and be able to monitor their, uh, their uh, email and internet communications. Let's bring in a new renaissance in Portland. Let's, let's all come together in one voice and decide that we want Portland to be a better oh place than it is right now. Hey, thank you, brother. No, I didn't. And um, uh, I worked at Cop Watch, but um, I didn't hear back from anyone. But like I said, I've been a real vocal critic ever since my stay at the River District Navigation Center. Things are getting crazy. I myself am personally homeless. I sell these, these street newspapers to survive. And uh, one of the things this company, Street Roots, is doing that they're actually paying us for is going out and handing out um, packages, care packages that have like hand sanitizer and clean socks and stuff. And that, that part has been uh, pretty cool that there's people actually out there willing to help people in this, this, this time of need. You know, like it's, it's. How long have you been with Street Roots? Uh, I've only been with Street Roots for about a couple of weeks now. Just started, just started selling them. You yeah. know, and it's. Uh, I've went through some various tragedies that brought me to being homeless, but it's given me a, a sense of worth. Right Keep it up. I worked with Street Roots for a really long time. It's oh, a great place. Nice. And, well, a great place. It's basically where I got my start, and you know. Uh, oh, dude, it, that's so awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, hey, um, let me tell you, because I did hear about that, uh, they're giving you guys 40 bucks uh, to come yeah. on out, and they are still selling papers, and you guys yeah. are still out here. What's the, uh, um, what's the public been like in, in response to buying papers and, and your relationship with customers like? So far, it's been pretty cool. Like, I mean, it's been pretty normal. It, more normal than you would expect, to be honest. Like, I, I figured people would be... Uh -huh. Stay back, but it, it's it's been pretty cool, you know, especially because you know as 
you said yourself you were a vendor for a while. You get yeah. to know people. I do, yeah. You yeah, know, yeah, yeah. and the way I do it is, is I don't try to make skin to skin contact with people. You know, I, I try to have a quick one ready right here for them so and so they can grab it, you yeah. know, and things yeah. like that. Yeah. But uh, it's it's been people. I mean, it is Portland after all, though. Are Portland. you from the city, or? Yeah, yeah. I'm, well, I'm from Oregon. I'm from Hood River, but I've I've been in Portland since '95, and you know I've traveled around a lot, lived in a lot of other big cities, and Portland is def definitely different compared to other big cities. Why as do you far say that? It's much nicer here. Uh, people are much more kind. To much, your situation. Yeah, yeah. To to my situation, just generally just generally it's it's uh you know it's, it's not like living in chicago where people look pardon my french don't give a fuck you said you're homeless right um where are you sleeping each night uh lately i've been sleeping at a place called tent city which is uh the right to dream too it's on the other side of the river uh be mainly because they've been closing down shelters they've been taking you know, like, the main shelter that I was staying at, uh, called Street Team, they got, the, the county pulled all the funding. The mayor and the county commissioner said that today uh, they were going to be giving um, uh, vouchers to the shelters to hand out to people if there, if there is no shelter space. These vouchers could be used at hotels and motels around the city. Okay, I have, I have direct, a, a friend of mine is, uh, works for NARA. Okay. And uh, she actually, she went out and helped me get this backpack and the sleeping bag today. Thanks, Michelle. Um, she has direct contact and she's one of the people that, that uh, is supposed to be giving out those vouchers. It's not happening like that. It's, it's, I mean, it's supposed to be happening like that, but they're trying to get, they're trying to make people pair up in hotel rooms. Uh, you know, it's it's not as easy as just being like, oh, there's no bed available. Well, here's your hotel voucher at all. As a result of this, my caseworker through NARA, Michelle, again, uh, got me a, a good backpack and went out and got me a good sleeping bag because I didn't have a sleeping bag. You know, one of those really nice ones that scrunch up real small. And uh, just doing that for now because the way they're reporting it on the news is it isn't really how it's going down at all. Are you concerned about getting sick yourself? About as concerned as I am with getting cancer. I mean, if it's going to happen, it's going to happen, is the way I look at it. Uh, there, there are precautions, sure. I mean, I carry around my... my uh, well, in one of my pockets, I've got my... Uh, uh, sanitizing okay. stuff, you know, but that's about as far as it goes. What do you think about the overall response? I think people are, uh, the overall response is... It's a has, global pandemic, a pandemic being that is a global... Yeah, no, I, I understand what a global pandemic is, and I think that people are overreacting. As they're calling it, I mean... Yeah, yeah, I think, sure, yeah, there's a problem there. But I wouldn't call it a global pandemic. I, I would say an epidemic of some sort. Have but you ever lived in a time, uh, do you remember a time um, where things were this bad? <coughs> uh, no. No. Not off the top of my head. Not off the top of my head, no. And it, things are crazy right now. Like, I, I, I really, I, all I see mainly is overreaction, and that's that's really well in my mind but people are people are you know chickens with their heads cut off so. so you've been on the street for a while is there any advice that you'd like to give somebody that might be new or finding themselves um, on the street new due to the economic collapse that we're all facing today um, don't give up hope and use the resources that are available there are because there are resources there's uh, I, I, w I got to a point where I had given up hope and then I found street routes and just just through finding street routes I've been able to get hooked up with some resources and some other stuff got on some housing lists you know doing the also making the extra money you know handing out the, the kits we were doing along with selling the paper and stuff like that just 
you know, don't give up hope. Don't give up hope. There, 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 there are options out there, and it's just being homeless isn't an end-all be-all. The city and the county uh, said that they're going to be giving vouchers out to shelters tonight to be uh, giving uh, to allow people uh, to stay at motels. Uh, unfortunately, it sounds as if that's not the case, and so that's what we're out well, here. I didn't say that on the news, I think, didn't it? Yeah, yeah. that's what they said. Yeah. And, in, and on the news thing, like, I had this news thing on my phone, and I was reading about it. It made me cry when I read that. Yeah, we were reserved for a shelter spot tonight, and they denied us and sent us on our way. What? Yeah, so there's no options for vouchers. They didn't say you were talking to or anything? They said no new people in shelters. Uh, we're closing them down for contamination as far as the existing guests go. Uh, and they said we had no resources other than they figured out. Really? Yeah. So that's why I was shocked. When I saw you guys there afterwards, I was kind of watching what you're doing. Just to, that is really silly. Yeah. So. That's retarded. Yeah. I don't know why they would do that. Well, okay. They were sleeping in the car tonight, so. And they deny the reservation today when we were supposed to pick it up. Um, and then I have never didn't hear the, the announcement of there being vouchers available because I would have brought it up at that point, you know. Um, uh, maybe it's the ability... Which uh, shelter was it? Uh, so it was, um, on, it was a couple shelter on Killingsworth and... Uh, or Lombard and, and MLK. I'm the only one that, that had openings that, that, that at the able. time that we were, as a couple, as a heterosexual couple, were able to get into. Can you tell me, is this, where do you get your information? TPI. Okay. Yeah. Have you tried 211 yet? Um, yeah, and they always refer me to back to TBI. Okay, so you do know about 211? Uh, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm really sorry to hear that. Um, how long have you been here in the city of Portland? About three years. About three years. And uh, is shelter space a normal normal problem? No, no, not at all. We go in, we um, file the application process, make show up regularly on a couple of days in a row, um, and then they give us a bed date and we're there. So we're there was in. no option to share a room or... Okay. Oh, it's a very dormitory, dormitory style, uh, cubicle partitions, everybody no, in the big I'm sorry, uh, share a motel tonight. No, no, they, I didn't hear of, of when I was there and they were saying, they were giving us the details on the shelter closure, the shelter like increased closure, uh, there was no other options available. I asked them, I said, so you mean to tell me that no other shelter can take us in? And they said no. Did they give you a time estimate of when they'll start allowing people back in? They said no idea. Yeah. Yeah. So. Like, you would think the people on the front lines would have the, the regular the information. They're the most highly funded um, institution for, uh, for homeless. Okay, if you'd like, we could go ahead and publish that. If you have an email, if you'd like people to contact you. Sure, absolutely. Yeah, I can provide that. Uh, my email is carl.rt.anthony87 at gmail.com. What the fuck? <laughs> hey, coronavirus! Yo, yeah. second there's no consent, motherfuckers. Some of you are. Yeah, fuck you. Yeah, but hey, 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 they're entertaining, though. I don't want my face on anything. Fuck him! She's never too much. That's fun. I'm not trying to have any problems, we're just, we're just passing by. I don't want my face on anything. Well, you don't get to make that decision. Uh, honestly, because I'm the content creator. Because it's a